Aaron here with Harden. We're going to bottle a five gallon batch of the caribou slobber that we brewed in the last video. Rinsing out the bottle to get any dust that might have accumulated in them out. Fully cleaning and sanitizing. Carbonating, we're using five ounces of fermenter's favorite corn sugar. We'll mix this in the batch before we throw everything in the bottles. Start off by boiling the water and we'll add the sugar. Be sure to stir the sugar into the hot water, make sure it fully dissolves, and you want to let it boil for about 7 to 10 minutes. Then you have to let it cool. Hey, I'm just filling up this bucket with water so we can put some cleaner in it and clean some stuff. About 2 minutes left, we'll be boiling for the priming sugar. Once it's done boiling, we'll have to let it cool before we can add it to the, to the beer. Four. Make it a batch of cleaning solution so we can clean the bottles we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, easy cleaning. Right. Now we're done with the boiling of the priming sugar. Put it in a ice bath to cool it down so we can add it to our caribou slobber for bottling. One ounce of star sand in here. Mix up the sanitizer. So now we have a bucket of cleaner, bucket of star sand, a bunch of bottles, five gallons of caribou slobber that we're going to take care of today. Make the cleaner in your bottling bucket and then you can use that to clean your bucket and then uh, put the sanitizer in it after you empty it out. and. Then it'll be clean and sanitized. We're running the cleaner through the spigot, through the hose to clean it. All right, and uh, we got our clean bottling bucket and we're transferring the sanitizer to the bottling bucket now to sanitize it. Um, you just wanna make sure Everything's clean, everything's sanitized. Otherwise, you might end up with an infection, you know, or it might have some wild yeast, you know, and kind of infect the beer, is what they say, I guess. Um, and you just want to clean all your bottles, make sure everything's sanitized, because if it's not, you know, you might have bottle bombs or, you know, it might have off flavors and infections. So we're just cleaning, sanitizing, and then we'll get this. Bottling started. Correct. Working on getting some of these bottles clean. We'll get them sanitized and we'll start bottling the, the caribou slobber. Primary sugar is cool. We're putting it in the bottling bucket. Bottom. And then we'll rack the beer on top of that so it can mix up good. Get 
get this party started. When you're siphoning, you want it to swirl like that so it'll mix up good. You can see the sugar in the middle. Now it's starting to mix in. You smell it. All right, almost done racking this over to the bottling bucket. Trying to keep the last bit of the beer off of the uh, yeast bed. Try to keep it as undisturbed as possible. Looks like we've done pretty good so far. We'll get the last little bit as much as we can in there and then uh, time to put it in the bottle. Like seal it up good while we bottle. Now, do you need to stir the sugar any, or is it good since it was transferred over? It should be good, because it was... Oh, yeah. Because it was stirring the whole time we siphoned. All right. Everything is sanitized. Show you a little trick with uh, getting your liquid out of your bottles or carboys quicker. Um, both these bottles are full of water. Um, one I'm just going to dump out like normal. The other one I'm going to do a uh, start a whirlpool and get a little cycling going. You can see how much quicker it'll empty, and it saves a lot of time, especially with your bigger bottles like this and getting uh, liquid out of your carboys. Doesn't seem like it was much of a time difference with these size bottles, but when it comes to your carboys, that makes a huge difference. Just make sure that you're able to handle the carboys because there's a lot more weight to that. But once the fluid gets down to a certain level in your carboy, dump it upside down, give it a swirl, and it'll empty it a lot quicker. Sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Filling up these bottles, putting the cap on them. Get ready to cap. Aaron's sanitizing some more bottles. Get a little assembly line going. Yeah, it always helps. Got an extra pair of hands. Kind of want to get it about an inch from the top. I think we got enough bottles. Yeah, I think so. Gotta watch for it overflowing like that. When you're not paying attention, things will happen. Beer goes in. Sanitizer comes out. Once you get the bottles full, throw some caps on top, and then once you get them done, use a bottle capper, get them closed up. Throw some caps on your bottles, and let them sit for a couple weeks to condition. The yeast that remains will convert the priming sugar to CO2 causing the beer to carbonate, and then it'll be ready to drink. We're, uh, we're just bottling these beers, and you know, I was thinking about different size bottles we're using, and because we're using priming sugar um, and not fizz drops, then it, it just makes it easier. You can use any size bottle you want, 
and you can use different size bottles and you don't have to worry about measuring anything. Basically you batch prime it, you prime the whole batch with sugar and then you can bottle it however you want. Got the bottles capped, filled, you know, and then uh, got a little bit to taste test. Um, should be pretty good. Two weeks, and we'll try it. See ya. Hey guys, hope you like what you see. If you uh, enjoy the videos, please rate, comment, subscribe, let me know so I can know if we need to keep bringing these videos to you. Um, thanks for watching. We just got done bottling the uh, caribou slobber. I'm setting up a taste test here for Aaron. I thought it'd be a fun idea to do a blind taste test. So let's fill these glasses up. And we'll uh, get it going. Alright, so these are the three beers that we're going to be taste testing today. Aaron, you excited? Okay. All right, we'll see what he thinks about them. He doesn't know what they are. Got three of them here for him. Let's see which ones he likes, which ones he doesn't like, which ones taste like crap. Oh, yeah. I got them poured, and I'm going to be trying these two with him, except the difference is I know what they are, and Aaron doesn't. So we got three beers here. I'm tasting them. Aaron's going to taste them. Which one you want to start with? Let's go left to right, or for you, right to left. All right. I mean, this one here, pretty clear. A little hoppy. Yeah. Not, not too hoppy, but definitely. You might be able to guess one or two of these. Oh, I'm kind of shaking. I can taste the hops for sure. Like, it kind of has this sweet or smooth or something aftertaste. Yeah, it does. Almost tastes like. Like an aftertaste. Hmm. What, what would you I mean, rate it out of like a one to ten? Ten being the best beer you've ever had. Seven and a half, eight, seven, seven and a half. Yeah. It's it's not it's not overly hoppy. No, it's not definitely like. not overly hoppy. <clears throat> It's it's more like a I would I wouldn't say it's an IPA. <laughs> but it could be. So if you had to take a guess, just a stab in the dark, just could you maybe even Express a brewing company or what it might possibly be. <clears throat> okay. It's a little unique. Like the hop yeah. is there, but like that after flavor is kind of, it's a unique flavor. Yeah, I, I, I can notice that too. It, it's like it, it finishes really well. Yeah. It doesn't linger. It's not bitter at all either. Yeah, and it doesn't linger. Like the, the hops are up front, but then after that, it's just kind of just mellowed out, and then it's kind of, like you said, it's gone. It's, yeah. But I, I couldn't Smooth. tell you. I've never had any, like, it's it's different. Not bad at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, this is my first time having that too. It's, is it? Yeah, it's it's good. So you think it tastes like a stout? Yeah, more stout than IPA. I don't. I expected it to have a lot more hoppy bitterness. Yeah, well, you did just drink a different beer too. I mean, That's true. but I do agree. It it's not very hoppy at all, especially for it being called an IPA. It does seem more like it's like I would say Guinness just needs to stick with the with the stouts. <laughs> So if you're going to yeah. give me an IPA, I want I want some hoppy in your face. You know, mm-hmm. IBU. But so we got one more. I guess we got one more. I'm gonna say I like the uh, the nitro, the smoothness the nitro gives. Last one looks the same color as this one, maybe. But yeah, maybe close. a little darker. This one doesn't smell as hoppy. A little bit maybe. Not 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 as much as that one. It's good. You like it's it? It's kind of crisp. Not, in my opinion, not very, not too terribly happy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that. Crisp. Kind of a even flavor across the board. Yeah. It doesn't linger. Mm-mm. But you don't get anything. And it's not, front. yeah, it's not kick you in the mouth. Like this one, you get more up front with a different flavor in the end. This one's kind of consistent all the way through. It's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I've had this one. Mm, I, I highly doubt it. Is this homebrew? <laughs> no. Oh. It's not a home, No, they're all commercial. Yeah, they're all commercial. All commercial. Yeah. good i drink it again yeah i like it yeah <clears throat> i don't know i don't know which one you like better i probably like this one the least so what would you give that one like uh on a one to ten which one though yeah the nitro uh I don't think I would ever buy it. Yeah. I mean, after having the... Yeah, you know, their base, I, I their saw it. Stout. I saw it, and, and after you were telling me about that nitro you had, I've, I've been wanting to try nitro, something on nitro, so I, I got it. and I mean, I, I think it's okay. It's okay. But yeah, I probably wouldn't buy it again. Guinness needs to stick with the stouts because they've got a good thing going with that and leave the IPA to other people. I mean... I give them props for trying to branch oh, yeah. out and, that's and trying to, business. yeah, trying to appeal to more people. I really like the hot flavor of this one. Yeah. But I like that this one's more consistent and a little bit crisper. This one's kind of got a, like a, like I said, like more of a, a sweeter, <clears throat> almost earthy finish to it. That makes sense, you know, like, like yeah. tea does. Mm. It's kind of weird to compare tea and beer. But so what what rating would you give the this third one? This last one. Yeah. Maybe an eight out of ten. So you like this one better? I think than I might like the this first one a little one. bit better. Than this. I like the hoppy, the hops, the hoppiness of this one better. But I think overall, this one drinks easier. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that actually. I I really do. Uh, yeah, I think like as far as having a few of these, I'd be better off. This one is good, but it's got two different ranges of flavor that to me are different. Okay. So. Well, you ready to see what they are? Yes. I mean, you know what one of them is. I know what this one is. Yes. All right. Well, we'll uh, get up and go see it. Am I getting All right. Here? Yeah. If you want to get up. Come over here. This is what we got. That was the one on your left. The first the one, one you tried. I said was weird? Had well, that weird aftertaste? No. On my well, right. There's the one on your left. It was the first one on this side, you know. The one that had that earthy aftertaste? Yeah, I guess, yeah. 
And then the Guinness Nitro in the middle, which you guessed. And then this was Dogfish Head 60 Minute IPA. Hmm. Continually hopped India Pale Ale. So they were all IPAs. Yes, three That's, IPAs. I'm really... Blind taste test. Slightly disappointed that I put this one down lower because <laughs> the Grapefruit Sculpin was one of my favorites that I've had. Mm-hmm. And was the last batch that I brewed and kegged. And, I mean, Harden, you can tell, it, it, oh, yeah. turned out, it turned out great. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Smells good. It just has that weird finish that put it a little bit lower than the... Uh, the dogfish head. Yeah, I've I've heard good things about the dogfish head. I have too. That uh, sixty minute and the ninety minute. They have an imperial ninety minute, okay. but it's like continually hopped. I guess like yeah, throughout the fermentation. And see see how they got they got something inside there that slides around in that can. Should I find out? Yeah, man, we'll find it out. Find out what what's inside the can. It probably has something to do with the nitro, I guess. Yep. I didn't. I thought it was like you know, like a cylindrical thing that maybe went up and down in the, in the can. It's a little ball. <laughs> well, that was fun. So, was so. Well, what do you think? Surprising because I've always had a, a place for in my heart for the Dallas Point grapefruit sculpin, so I figured the sculpin would be up there on my list. But unfortunately, or fortunately, or however you put it, <laughs> I think this is my favorite. Not that this one's bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I I thought it was good. Yeah. yeah. I just think you know, it it was really smooth though. It is. You know, very very smooth, and it's just that finish that I didn't care for as much. Now the hoppiness up front, I definitely prefer this. Yeah. It, had a, it was a lot better on the hops, but overall, I think the dogfish might have. And you see what we think about the nitro? We cut it open. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. Blind, you go. blind, or semi-blind taste test, you know. I, I figured he would know which one was a nitro because he knew I had some. And I had never had it before. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, but I agree. I think, uh, I think, well, those are two, those, two, two those are two, scales. two very good IPAs. Very good IPAs, but they have two different flavors. Yeah. All right, well, until next time. See you around. There's all the beer that we just bottled. Two weeks left on that, and uh, we'll be trying that pretty soon. Kind of fun to do a. Are, are you even going to finish that nitro? <laughs> yes. Okay. Never waste a beer, even if you don't care for it as much. It's not bad. I won't waste it. Yeah, definitely. So, so, so what were you gonna say? I think I cut oh, you off. Just uh, if you ever have a chance for a, a blind taste test, go for it. It's fun, interesting. Lets you kind of explore the flavors without knowing what you've got in front of you. So. Yeah, I g I got the idea from uh, Better Beer Authority. They're on, they're on YouTube. If if you uh, want to check them out, it's they they have some pretty cool videos of good beers and different beers and uh, some of the com you know the commercial beers that aren't really right that you know most people don't really drink much of or actually a lot of people do drink a lot of them like Budweiser mm -hmm. but uh, I guess we don't really drink yeah <laughs> much. They have they do a lot of blind taste tests and uh, so, so I I thought it would be fun. Yeah, you know? it was good. So we'll uh, finish finish these off and yeah.
clean up from our, our bottling. Yeah, we got a lot of cleaning up to yeah. do. <laughs> Till next time. We'll see you.